Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today's topic is Packers from the perspective of a map analyst. So um, I already made a few videos about this topic right when I started my YouTube channel. Um, but those videos are low quality, which is natural when you just started um, creating videos for the first time. So also in the meantime, I have trained some malware analysts at work. Um, and by now I know more precisely what are common misconceptions about packers. So what is actually preventing you from understanding them correctly. And I would like to um, pinpoint those misconceptions and uh, make clear what, what is true and what is uh, not working. So, um, so today's topic is, um, I explain to you how packers work in general, how um, they are used to defeat antivirus products and um, why we even care about packers. Um, yeah, why do we care? Because most malware that is uh, mass targeted, that's not um, APT malware, is packed. Um, so it's a very useful skill for a malware analyst to recognize that a file is packed and um, also in the long run to know how to unpack it, but that's not the topic today. So, yeah. What is the purpose of packing? I am using a packer taxonomy from an academic paper here. Originally, packers were used to compress executable files. That means shrinking their size to save space on disk. UPX is probably the most famous example. This type of packer is also called a compressor. Packers that encrypt files are called cryptos because they do not compress but encrypt the target file. These are for instance used by threat actors to evade antivirus detection. But they might also be used to prevent reverse engineering. In academic papers, Protectors have been defined as packers that do both, compression and encryption. The paper reference is in the video description below. But how does packing actually work? Firstly, we have a program called the packer. That is, for instance, UPX. The packer takes a file as input as well as a stub. Some packers take the stub as separate input, as shown here, but the stub might also be part of the packer or generated by the packer. So this is just one example of several possibilities. The output of the packer is the packed file. The process of producing a packed file is called packing. The packed file is the stub with the target file inside, which is now compressed or encrypted. The stub is also called software envelope because if you look at the file contents, you first see only the stub. The uh, strings and headers of the target file inside are not visible without further steps because it's encrypted. By the way, those terms packer and packed file are often confused. The packer is always the program that does the actual packing. Think of UPX and generally it's not the program that we see when analyzing malware. We mostly just see the packed file. Another common misconception probably appeared because it makes sense for people who know how old viruses work. It is the idea that during packing, the stub is injected into the target file and that only parts of the target file are encrypted. While this is possible to do, it is overly complicated for the purposes of packers. Injection into certain file formats like PE files isn't as easy as just compressing or encrypting the whole file because it requires detailed knowledge of the internal structures and corner cases involved in changing a compiled binary like that. Furthermore, threat actors want to make their malware undetected by antivirus products and leaving parts of the target file in plain like the headers means that the antivirus products have more opportunity to detect the file. So while it would be possible to pull this off, I have never seen any sample packed like this, except when dealing with viruses which inject themselves into a host file and may modify parts of the host file. For the goals of packing, it also seems to have no advantages really. 
Let's make sure that this is a misconception by using thick lines here. Now we know how packing works, but how does the packed file work? How does the encrypted part get executed? The stub is also called decompression or decryption stub because its purpose is to decompress or decrypt the encrypted part in the packed file and then execute it in memory. There are two main ways used by packed malware files to run the target file in memory. It can be done in the current process of the packed file or it creates a child process of itself and injects the decrypt portion into it using a process injection technique. Process injection is very unusual for clean files. Using the own process to execute is usually done by reserving a section that has enough empty space in memory to put the decrypted or decompressed data inside. Such sections have a small or zero raw size, but a big virtual size. So that's why this is a common sign of packed files. UPX falls into this category as well as many other legit packers. Are there legit and malicious packers? In a sense, yes. When I say legit packers, I mean those that are used by clean programs and sometimes also by malware. Such packers are often easy to identify because their steps often contain the packer's name and tools like Detected Easy will tell you the packer's name. Maliciously used packers are those that are only used to pack malware and whose main purpose is antivirus evasion. Such packers mostly do not identify themselves. If they do, we malware analysts have an easy way to detect all the malware samples packed with them. So in such cases, packers make our lives for finding new malware and detecting it easier. Let's talk about another misconception that may arise if you are familiar with marketing campaigns of malware packers. The people who sell their packing services or packers want them to sound pretty cool. So they invented something called scan time crypto. And opposing to the runtime crypto, um, according to the marketing campaign, the scan time crypto uses a decryption stub that writes the target file to disk. For instance, into the temp folder and then it executes the target file. So there is no direct execution in memory when it comes to scan time cryptos. But from the viewpoint of the malware analyst, scan time cryptos are not packers. They are builders for malware droppers. A file that is built in such a way is called a dropper and it's not a packed file. So with that misconception out of the way, let's continue. I would like to add some more useful details about packed files here. How does a stub know where the encrypted content is located? A very common thing that you may encounter is the use of start and end markers. Such markers can be very useful for detection patterns. Because the encrypted part must be decrypted, you will also find the decryption key somewhere inside the binary or a key generation function. Both might be useful for writing static unpackers. But not all packed files work like that. Oftentimes, the encrypted part is placed in well-known structures of the file. For instance, it could be placed at a fixed offset or directly at the end of the file. Another common location is the last section of the file. Why the last? Because the size of it can be easily expanded without affecting other sections that follow after it. The PE resources are also a common location as well as the .NET resources. What I also see often is a huge base64 string that contains the encrypted data. An important term in connection with packers and packing is binary padding. Binary padding means that the packer changes a small portion of the file randomly. For instance, it might add random data to the packed file. This method changes the hash value of every packed file, even if the stub and the input file are the same. This method is also able to circumvent block listing by antivirus products, but it does not evade any other detection mechanisms. However, this is not the same as polymorphism. If you have seen my video about polymorphic and metamorphic viruses, you will already know why this is false advertising. Actually, I find it even difficult to apply the term polymorphism to packers in the first place. 
but it has been established by now. So let's talk about what polymorphism means when it is used to describe Packers. In Packers, it refers to the ability to create unique decryption steps. Another term for that is unique step generation or short USG. That means the Packer has a raw step or step pieces that it modifies into millions of possible variants to create a unique step for every packed file. Such modification can, for instance, be achieved by carrying the raw step source, shuffling instructions where the order does not matter, including junk instructions in random places and compiling the step. The main difference to binary padding is that USG evades antivirus pattern detection. What is also no polymorphism is carrying like 20, 100 or even 1000 steps to choose from and picking one randomly. That would be called oligomorphism. 1000 is a small number when it comes to that. When malware reports say that a malware server delivers a new malware variant every minute, what they actually refer to is files packed by a polymorphic cryptor at the malware server. If such a cryptor had only 1000 steps, it would not even last one day before they are used repeatedly. The difference between polymorphic and oligomorphic cryptos is that polymorphic cryptos have so many possible step variants that in practical application they will not create the same step twice. So what is the purpose of polymorphic packing? It is the evasion of antivirus pattern detection. Patterns are sequences of bytes that the antivirus scanner is looking for in a malware. Antivirus signatures may contain patterns, among others, to determine maliciousness. If that byte sequence is found and all other requirements of the signature are met, then the antivirus program detects a file as malicious. To detect malware packed by malware cryptos, the most obvious choice is a pattern over the decryption or execution code in the stub. A pattern in an encrypted portion of the file, in the target file, does not make sense because a small change in the target file or in the encryption key will already change entirely how the encrypted part looks like. So the stub is here the part that will usually be detected by the antivirus program. Non-unique stubs make our lives as malware analysts easier. Let's say someone creates a malware that is not yet detected by antivirus programs, but packs it with a malware crypto, just to be sure. If that crypto now applies the same stub that was used for other malware before, the resulting packed file will be detected as malicious, although the original malware was not detected. A unique step, however, has never been seen before, so the antivirus scanner will not be able to detect the malware by using a pattern signature on the step. While automatic signature creation may still create a pattern for the unique step, it will not work on the next one that was generated by the packer. Now compare this to binary padding and you will realize why it is fake advertising from both sides, the antivirus media and the marketing of cryptos. I will not go into metamorphism here because that's not a term I would apply to packers at all. If you are interested in metamorphism, watch my video about viruses. In the next video, I will cover the question how to actually know if a file is packed. So thanks for watching. Please ask remaining questions below and see you in the next video.